Young American blues guitarist Robert Cray has been one of the most successful blues artists in America for the last two or three years. His phenomenal guitar talent has won him an unprecedented four of American's prestigious WC Handy Awards in 1984. Robert studied blues guitar under the legendary blues man Albert Collins, and we've now got him live on the tube. Here he is, it's the Robert Cray Band.
With me now we have the very talented Robert Crow. Robert, I noticed in lots of those footage there you're playing with lots of fabulous different people, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I think we should go back to your early influences of how you got into being a blues guitarist. Well, to go way back, I started listening to a lot of BB King and Buddy Guy, Magic Sam, mm -hmm. Howlin' Wolf, Muddy Waters. But before that, though, I played everything else under the sun. I was I was heavily influenced when the Beatles came out. That's what made me get a guitar. <laughs> How old were you when I was 12 years old when I got a guitar for yeah. the first time? Yeah. Because you're and very young, aren't you, for a bluesman, really? Well, you can be any age right now yeah. to sing the blues. You know, as long as you're living and loving, you'll have the blues. Yeah. You know? And I'm 33 right now, but uh, I got involved with blues when I was 17, 16 years old. Yeah. And did you did you tour around a lot in those in the early time playing? In the early times, no. We didn't really start touring until about 1976, and we toured basically on the West Coast. And uh, then it was in 1983 that we started coming across the United States and then to England and abroad. Do you find that there was a because a market for blues? Because you, I mean, it's a bit like, and there's lots of blues fans who would always be blues fans. But then it seemed that maybe throughout the 60s it was very popular, and then maybe died away a bit throughout the 70s. Did you find that was the case? Well, you know, on on the West Coast there was a big scene in San Francisco, and when my, when I was living in uh, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon, at that time, we used to bring uh, people up from the Bay Area and play our personal blues festivals that we used to run that the University of Oregon took over after a while. So we had people like, uh, local people like Sonny Rhodes and Jimmy McCracklin was down there. Uh, a lot of people were down there yeah. at the time. I think we've got a little bit of archive footage that we might show. Not a good I think we've, who have we got the archive footage of? Is it? Yes, here it comes. It's B.B. King and Buddy Guy, I think. <laughs>
brilliant, Bad Nico. And as you said, with the most extraordinary microphone I've ever seen. It's about as big as this table, wasn't it? It was great. Did you, did you, I mean, that, when was that about, I guess, 1965, something like that, that film? About I'm not sure on that one. Uh, do you find that, um, because being contemporary blues, it covers, it's not just 12 bar, as people might have thought it is, it's much more wider spread, isn't it, as a sort of a music? I mean, would you go into the sort of music that you think is like a rhythm and blues that wouldn't, you wouldn't immediately think of as being rhythm and blues? Exactly. A lot of it is, it is rhythm and blues. Like you take, for example, a lot of the things that Albert King did, he used uh, the Stax rhythm section, being Booker T and the MGs on a lot of the material that he did. And uh, to me, personally, I don't see any difference in rhythm and blues and blues. Mm. People like Otis Redding sang some beautiful blues tunes, mm. I thought. But, the, you know, the music incorporated more than, you know, yeah. you know three chords. Well, I mean, I think it's excellent. I also heard that you're the, the, the biggest selling, in fact, ever blues artist because you've got a top 20 record in, the, in America at the moment, which, right. of course, I mean, that, do you think that blues is great, has or will come out and be a mainstream music again? Well, I really hope so. I hope that what we're doing, what other people are doing across the country and the, in the States, that, you know, brings out uh, more artists that have been around for a long time to the public, you know, all over the place. I know, for example, right now, there's a lot of acts working in the same places that we do across the country and it's really nice to see that. Yeah. Do you think that you, do you think, I have to ask you this very quickly, but do you think uh, British people can play the blues? Do you think Everybody possible? can play the blues. That's a good thing to hear. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed, Robert Cray. You'll be performing later something that I shall be personally taping and looking at here. Please, they're British. Uh, <laughs>
Something strange was in the air But it was I just could not pin it down And then I heard the shower run And I knew what it was He was still a 